The background photo shows the dunes at Mason Bay from left to right. The video clips are a tui, a variable oyster catcher and a kaka. Okay, I think this is attempt number five. Doesn't normally take me this many attempts. Sometimes it's not unusual for me to have to do two goes at recording a vlog voiceover because the second time it's a bit smoother. And that's normally the but this time I don't know why it's a bit of an nightmare. Anyway, Stewart Island, an amazing place. Maybe my head is just full of too many things and I'm struggling to get them all across. So I for my fifth attempt I'm just going to kind of just improvise a bit. I'm not even looking at my notes. This is a New Zealand pigeon. When I arrived at the island, it was one of the first really kind of high quality bird watching places I've been to in New Zealand. And it took my breath away the amount that you could see in and around Oban, which is where the hostel was. These are kaka feeding. Kaka I was seeing regularly five, six, seven, eight times a day. While I was around Oban, anyway, the, the town. I thought their antics were amazing. They struck me as being very adaptable feeders, able to feed on lots of different things and use lots of different feeding techniques. So then I went for, uh, one day I went for a walk to the north. This is a red billed gull. Regular sight along the kind of beaches. These are two silver eye. A regular kind of sight in the bushes. These self introduced from Australia sort of hundred ish years ago. Oh these are, this was my first kind of sighting of parakeets on Stewart Island with some feathers on the ground. Oh, and then I saw one alive in a tree. I expected to see them in the tree. wasn't quite sure why they were on the ground. Now, apparently, I sort of read up on this a bit and asked people, it seems like, oh, this is a kelp gull. It seems like before predators were introduced, birds were in New Zealand were a lot safer on the ground. So maybe they evolved feeding habits to feed on the ground a lot. But they've had to adapt to the fact that there's a lot of dangerous ground-based predators, like introduce cats, introduce possums, introduce rats. And so they don't feed on the ground so much, but if they make the mistake of doing it, they can get caught. So maybe that was the story behind that pile of feathers. So this is another day when I walked towards Acker's Point and I got up very, very early this time because I really wanted to see the little penguins and maybe some other seabirds as they were leaving their burrows at Acker's Point. Oh, and guess what? I saw another kakar on the way. Acker's Point has a lot of anti-predator protection, partly because of all the seabirds that nest there. And guess what? I saw two red ground parakeets feeding on the ground. Apparently they don't feed on the ground so much, and maybe they felt safer feeding on the ground there because they knew there weren't many predators. Oh look, it's a little penguin. My advice is, the little penguins seem to stick quite close to shore, and so I found that I took a friend to Acker's Point later on in the day, and we saw little penguins just in the water through binoculars, because they seem to stick, or some of them, at least some of them stick quite close to shore. On another day, I went to Ulva Island, which is just offshore from Stewart Island. These are Weka. By the way, unless I say otherwise, every single bird we're seeing is native to New Zealand and not, not found anywhere else. So this is like loads of exciting birds only found in New Zealand. Weka are just so inquisitive and they just seem to just like dig around for food everywhere, which is... I think I've mentioned this before, maybe that's why they've quickly adapted to humans and poke around in people's rucksacks and stuff. Oh, this is a little island shag, so this is a seabird that's named after the island. And here we've got marks on the beach which are where a little penguin has walked from its burrow out to sea. 
and this is a brown creeper. I reckon this was my best view during the whole trip, my whole backpacking trip around New Zealand. And this is a red crown parakeet. Yeah, so I was on a backpacking trip. Oh, this is a yellow head. I was on a backpacking trip around New Zealand. And so for me, Stuart Island was brilliant because so much is within... Oh, this is a yellow, yellow crown parakeet. So much was just within walking distance. So you didn't need transport. The whole island is set up as if you don't have transport. So I strongly recommend it if you're backpacking into wildlife watching or just into walking, whatever. This is a saddleback. And a lot of the birds we've just been looking at here, the, the parakeet, the yellowhead, the saddleback, pretty rare. Not, not, uh, don't have populations with high numbers in New Zealand. So I was really excited to see them. Guess what? It's another kakar. This one's preening. And again, I just, I love their plumage. I just think it's incredible. It's just some amazing texture about how their feathers look. One day, because I was uh, I was on Stewart Island for sort of two weeks, one day I went for a walk around a headland. I saw this pied shag preening. Pied shag, by the way, also seen in other countries, not just New Zealand. Okay, this is an albatross. It's a white-capped albatross. Convenient for me, it's criss conveniently for me, it's crisscrossing about the same distance away, so I can keep it in focus. New Zealand, Stewart Island, Australasia, excellent places to see albatross. Got some fantastic views f from the sort of coast of Stewart Island for the whole of the two weeks. One of the big highlights for me. These are. This is a pair of paradise shell duck, male to the left, female to the right. The next video is of a tui calling, so I'm going to be quiet so we can hear it. This is a red pole, which is a European finch. Um, so introduced. Seems to be doing really well on Stewart Island. And in fact, I saw more on Stewart Island than I have anywhere else in Europe, in the world, basically. Um, yeah, so if you want to get good views of red pole, go to Stewart Island in New Zealand. These are red-billed gulls, and in the background we're going to see a kelp gull appear. Then the next video clip is going to be a variable oyster catcher. So, I, I mean, I could go on about this. I think Stuart Island's fantastic. If you're a backpacker on a budget, come to Stuart Island, and it's brilliant because the whole place is designed around as if you, uh, it's designed around exploring on foot. And there's lots of day walks. I've just shown you some of the day walks and some of the stuff I saw on those day walks. And getting to Oliver Island is relatively cheap. Anyway, I then did a longer distance walk for five days to Mason Bay, which is in the to the west. The trail was very well maintained initially. Then I encountered some of the worst trail I've ever seen, possibly the worst trail I've ever seen anywhere in the whole world, and I've seen some pretty bad trails. And you can bypass that by taking a water, ta water taxi to Freshwater Bay. And then I continued on towards Mason Bay but the whole thing was a fantastic adventure and if I go to the blog for more information oh check out this photo this this is legitimately what quite a lot of the paths can be like and you are just wading through mud but as, you know as long as you've got a spare change of clothes in your rucksack that you keep dry during the day to put on once you get to the huts where you're staying overnight I think it's all right that was a bellbird by the way and then once you've got through all of that there's this beautiful boardwalk and the path suddenly becomes fantastic for most of the rest of the way to Mason Mason Bay. So a big reward there if you can get about halfway. And then at Mason Bay you've got this dune system. You can see uh, southern brown kiwi all over Stewart Island, including at Oban. 
the dunes here are a particularly famous spot. Oh, look, there's some tracks. Oh, my goodness, it's a feral cat. Don't really want those because they're introduced predator. So, oh, my goodness, look, that's kiwi tracks in the sand. Exciting. Um, bird watchers, check it out. Check this out. This is a New Zealand pipit which I saw around the Mason Bay area. I spent a couple of days at the, on the Mason Bay area. Oh, look, this looks to me like kiwi poo. Exciting. And then the next photo is some kiwi peck marks where the kiwi has stuck its bill in the ground and shuffled it around, which has made these larger holes. And then I panicked, completely messed up my camera settings, but here's a video of a southern brown kiwi that I saw during the day. A unique experience that you can have on Stewart Island. Check out the video description, there's a link to my blog and stuff. Thanks for watching.